Hi, I'm Sarah, and I'm a board-certified behavior analyst. In my last video, I mentioned the importance of building rapport with your learner. If you don't have a positive and trusting relationship with your learner, they will be a lot less likely to follow directions and participate in daily routines that will benefit them. The scientific term for the rapport-building process is called pairing. Contrary to popular belief, this does not mean that you're pairing yourself with the learner, like two peas in a pod. The term pairing is short for stimulus-stimulus pairing. It means that you're repeatedly pairing one stimulus, yourself, with another stimulus, a preferred item or activity, so that over time you end up eliciting the same happy feelings in the learner that are elicited by the preferred item or activity. This effect happens to everyone in some form or other. One example is when you recall a certain memory when you smell a certain smell or hear a certain song because the smell or the song was present at the time that the memory was formed. Anyway, let's discuss some ways you can pair yourself with a learner's existing reinforcers. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and check out the link to the guided notes in the video description. Now let's get to it! Be intentional about pairing every time you see the learner. Depending on your learner and how your time with them is structured, you can work on this intermittently for shorter periods of a few minutes at a time or for longer chunks of time. If you've just started working with a learner or you're working on rebuilding your rapport, definitely spend more time pairing. During the pairing process, the learner should pick the activity. Make sure to present the learner's favorite items, activities, and snacks. The purpose of this time is for you to become the giver of all good things, like Santa Claus or Oprah. Consider going to the learner's favorite places, such as their favorite restaurant. You want to be paired with the learner's most favorite things so that you become their new favorite thing. Stay nearby and engage during the process. It'll be way harder to become paired with reinforcement if you're sitting far away from the learner and scrolling through your phone while the learner is engaging with their favorite items and activities. Instead, you should try to add to the fun. Position yourself at the learner's eye level and at a close but comfortable distance. But if the learner prefers to engage in these activities alone, don't force them to involve you. If this is the case, try just narrating and praising the learner's actions or playing parallel with them. Say your learner is playing with a toy train. Narrating would sound like this. Wow, you're pushing the train around the track. Now it's going to go through the tunnel. You're doing a great job playing. If your learner does like when you play with them, try to find creative ways to make the activity even more fun. My go-to is to put whatever toy we're playing with on my head and pretend it's a hat and then pretend to get frustrated when it falls off. Most of my clients find it amusing and even when they don't, I still just associated myself with a preferred item. And while you're pairing, limit demand. Demands can include obvious things like asking the learner to go clean their room, but can also be more subtle like asking the learner to clean up their toys between activities or telling the learner to play in a certain way. Questions can also be considered demands because they imply that the learner has to respond. Instead, remember, narrate and praise like I showed you before. This is harder than it seems because asking questions is very natural. But instead of saying, what are you doing? Are you having fun? You could say, wow, you're about to go down the slide. That looks so fun. The learner doesn't have to respond to this and they just receive praise for doing something they like to do. As an added bonus, if you're working on language acquisition with a learner, you just expose them to language. It's also important to be able to recognize signs that you're becoming paired with reinforcement successfully. If the learner reacts to you in a similar way as to one of their positive reinforcers, you're likely becoming a reinforcer yourself. If the learner freely approaches you, looks at you, smiles at you, follows your directions, you have successfully established rapport with them by pairing yourself with reinforcement. But as a reminder, pairing is not a one and done task. Pairing needs to be a recurring process to maintain the rapport you've established. So to recap, here's what you need to know about pairing. Make time to do this every day if possible. Offer preferred items and activities. Let the learner lead the activity. Stay nearby and engage during the pairing process. Use praise and narrate the learner's actions. Make things as fun as possible. Limit demands and questions. Monitor for signs that you're becoming a reinforcer. Continue pairing on a regular basis. And those are the basics of rapport building or pairing. Thanks for watching.